Good morning, everyone. The chief executive will first speak before answering questions. Please don't ask more than two questions. Chief executive, good morning, everyone. Last Thursday, that is on the 30th of May, the court of first instance delivered a judgment in relation to a very serious case that is conspiracy to commit subversion. 47 people were indicted, 45 people were convicted. It shows the scale and gravity of the case. The remaining two defendants, due to insufficient evidence tendered to the court to prove their culpability, they were not convicted. The Department of Justice has already indicated that an appeal would be lodged. The court gave reasons for the conviction. They said that the ultimate purpose and aim was the case was made very clear to the public. It was to undermine, destroy, or overthrow the existing political system and structure of the Hong Kong SAR established under the basic law in one country, two systems. The defendants made use of the so-called primaries plan to secure a majority of seats of the LegCo to compel the SAR government to accede to their political requests and, will dis indis and would indiscriminately veto the government's budget and public works proposal to force the LegCo to be dissolved, rendering the government unable to in introduce any new policies or implement existing policies. This is a seriously undermine the power and authority of the chief executive and the SAR. It would necessarily amount to serious interference in disruption or dis undermining of the performance of duties and functions in accordance with the law by the body of the power of the Hong Kong SAR, subverting the state power. And it uh, shown very clearly to the court that there was the 10 step to mutual destruction through means as such as uh, large scale demonstration and mutual destruction. They also, in addition, they also call for sanctions to cause, as I said, mutual destruction, putting Hong Kong people uh, into are seri a plight, and they made use of these uh, primary procedures to destroy the existing structure and political system of the Hong Kong SAR established under the basic law and one country, two systems. There are also a number of principles established by the judgment. That is, the illegal means is not limited to the use of a violence or the threat to use violence or criminal uh, means. It also includes other illegal means, in, such as the abuse of power. The LegCo will consider the budget and public spending proposals as enshrined in Article 73 of the Basic Law. Indiscriminately um, vetoing the budget and the public expenditure proposals for political means is a violation of Article 73 of the Basic Law. What is enshrined in this article is our constitutional duty. Violation of this article uh, is abuse of power and subverting the state power. What they want to do is uh, to undermine the performance of duties and functions of the Hong Kong SAR. This case of conspiracy to commit subversion ending in a conviction of 45 people shows the scale and gravity of the case. It shows that uh, there are real risks to our national security. Perpetrators will use um, excuses, reasons, to conduct acts that undermine national security. In this case, they used the so-called primaries 
for the ultimate aim to undermine national security. That's why we should remain vigilant. We should be aware that risks to our national security can come any time catching us unawares. We may patch our wounds and stop our wounds from being reopening again, from being reopened again. We need to have a secure and stable environment for Hong Kong to focus on our economy and our development, as well as our improving people's livelihood. I'd, I'm glad to announce that when it comes to railway service, there is good news. The National Railway Service announced this morning that the service from Hong Kong to uh, Hong Shanghai, Beijing West will be enhanced and upgraded. The railway service will be using high speed rail. There are also car, uh, sleeping cars. The trains will depart at night starting from the 15th of June from Friday to Monday, plying between West Kowloon and uh, Shanghai, as well as Beijing West. The new sleeping coaches have these following features. The quality will be improved. There will be new experience provided. Normal speed train service will be upgraded to high speed rail. Number of seats will be increased to 600. Facilities will be newer and more modern. Travelling time will be shortened by half. Say from Beijing to Hong Kong, it used to be a day or so, but it will be now shortened to half a day. That is, 20, from 24 hours 30 minutes to 12 hours 34 minutes. Shanghai to Hong Kong, the original travelling time will be 19 hours 34 minutes. It will be shortened to 11 hours 14 minutes. So the travelling time is cut by half for both journeys. And these are uh, departures at night time, meaning that you board the train at night, you arrive at your destination the next morning, you spend the evening on the train. There are also sleeping uh, coaches, so after a night's sleep, you will arrive. From Beijing, you board at about 8 p.m. The next morning at about 8.45 a.m., you arrive in Hong Kong at the West Kowloon Station. From West Kowloon, you board at about half past six in the evening, and you arrive at uh, Beijing West at about 7 a.m. It's very convenient, and with a shortened journey time, you cut your traveling time by about 12 hours. You also save on hotel accommodation. The separate um, custom check will be changed to co-location, so customs clearance will take a shorter time. Coverage of railway service will be expanded. Cross-boundary passengers in the past could only go from Hong Kong to Shanghai or Beijing. Now the service is enhanced to high-speed rail. Passengers can make use of Hebei, Shijiajiang, Hangzhou, Zhejiang, new stations to go straight to West Kowloon. There will be more frequent train departures. Most of the departures will take place over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Mon and Monday. These are more popular times with the increased uh, supply. Then um, passengers will benefit. Aside from the enhancement to high-speed rail as well as the inclusion of sleep, uh, sleep coaches, the network will be expanded as well. Starting from the 15th of June, the Hong Kong section of the high-speed rail will see its first long haul to Hubei. There will be six more stops going to Jiang Jiajie and Fang Huang City. 
These are popular destinations. High-speed rail service will also increase train frequency to short-haul stations. To Guangzhou East, the frequency will be increased to 26 departures. There will be an increase to 106 to 14 to Shenzhen North. There will be an increase to 129 um, departures. Direct destinations started from 44 destinations. It's now increased to 78 destinations, an increase by about 80 percent. Frequency has also been increased from 166 departures to over 200 departures, an increase by about 20 percent. From its commissioning in 2018, high-speed rail has been uh, usage has been increasing. For the first five months this year, the daily average usage is about 70,000 uh, passenger trips, an increase by about 100 percent compared to before the epidemic. Hong Kong government has been liaising with mainland authorities and the operators of the two sites. By increasing number of destinations and departures, flexible um, traveling measures as well as uh, multi-destination tickets, we make full use of the high-speed network connecting Hong Kong and the mainland. I thank the central authorities for their support and care. I thank the National Rail Service and the uh, different mainland authorities for their support. The increased and enhancement of service will be conducive to exchange of people and other aspects. This has significance. I've already asked the MTRCL as well as the Transport and Logistics Bureau to start work and enhance their publicity. The TLB as well as the MTRCL will announce details later today. Well, we should make use. You should make good use of the opportunities of the enhanced connection of transportation service between Hong Kong and the mainland. Different sectors, say for example, tourism, retail, transportation, hotel, catering and service industries should seize the opportunities, enhance their service and create um, special and new products. The government is advocating hospitality. I ask you all to uh, take part to enhance visitors' experience. We should be more courteous. We should be more helpful. We should smile more. We should take the extra mile to promote Hong Kong's hospitality so that Hong Kong will become a well-known place where people and visitors are welcome. See. The floor is now open. If you want to ask questions, please raise your hands. And when you are called, please state the media outlet you represent. And please ask only two questions. This side, this reporter. Good morning, Chief Executive. I'm from Cable. You mentioned the primaries case. Some electoral members um, had some political requests aside from government policies such as universal retirement protection. Now, are these against Article 73 of the Basic Law? And in fact, recently. Some um, politicians commented that there may be a conflict, there could be a conflict with the basic law and that an amendment would be necessary. The police recently arrested some individuals for suspicions on publishing articles with seditious intention. And according to the government, they are riding on a sensitive date in, site, in publishing articles with seditious intention. Is it against the law to talk about June 4th now? What if members of the public hold candles and go to Victoria Park tonight? Would they, would they be stopped by the police? Under the basic law, the Legislative Council has the constitutional duty to scrutinize government budgets as well as resolutions relating to public expenditure, and that the Council should consider the merits 
of these budgets and proposals. And it's for the council to pass or veto such resolutions and make comments with a view to ensuring the interest of Hong Kong. However, if any legislative council member expresses that regardless of what the budget or the resolution entails, he will veto it anyway, then it will be against Article 73 of the Basic Law, which provides that the, um, the Legislative Council should consider the merits of the proposal in deciding whether to endorse it or not. I believe it is also the public's as, um, wish that the Legislative Council would consider the merits of government proposals and budgets seriously. Indiscriminately vetoing any government proposal is an act against the basic law, that is, regardless of the merits of the budget. Uh, the government, the government's position is very clear. Any act happened on any day should be in accordance with the law. We have very clear legislation in Hong Kong, such as a public order ordinance, the national security uh, laws, as well as the uh, safeguarding national security ordinance. All acts and activities are bound by the legislation mentioned, and all acts should be done in accordance with the law. As I said in my opening remarks, in relation to this case of conspiracy to commit subversion, the ultimate purpose is to endanger national security. We all um, experienced the pain in the color revolution that took place in 2019. I also explained that when it comes to national security threats, we must not forget the pain. Even after our wounds have healed, there are still forces lurking in Hong Kong trying to destabilize Hong Kong and, and uh, threaten the security of Hong Kong. We must be vigilant against any attempt to hijack an event to disrupt social order. Next question. This reporter in black. Good morning, Sir Lee. Some English questions from the South China Morning Post. Uh, firstly, uh, as mentioned by another reporter, um, would Hong Kong residents still be able to publicly mourn June 4th from Long Causeway Bay tonight? And would the recent arrest and the police deployment be counterproductive and instead remind people of the upcoming June 4th? A second question, with regards to the HKU Council, what do you think of the root cause of this infighting uh, that appears to be going on inside the HKU Council? Do you stand on the side of the council or on the side of the vice chancellor on this matter? And as the chancellor of HKU, what are you going to do to help resolve the infighting and protect the school's reputation and operation? Thank you. Uh, the government position on public events is very clear. All activities by any person must be conducted according to the law. Uh, no activities that contravene the law should take place. The government, of course, will take action in accordance with the law, which includes the public order ordinance, the Hong Kong national security law, and the safeguarding Hong Kong security uh, ordinance. I have said in my beginning speech that we should not forget the pain that we all went through in the attempted color revolution which took place in 2019. The threat to national security is real and such activities can happen all of a sudden and different people may use different excuses 
to hide their intention. So it is important we all bear that in mind to be on guard all the time against attempts to cause trouble to Hong Kong, particularly uh, disturbing public peace. Hong Kong government will ensure that all activities that take place in public uh, must be conducted within the law, and any activities that contravene the law, law enforcement agencies will take action accordingly. Uh, regarding Hong Kong U, I have noted uh, media reports uh, regarding uh, some uh, internal matters about Hong Kong U. Hong Kong U is a successful university that belongs to the Hong Kong SAR. Hong Kong citizen and I myself, of course, have high expectation of good governance in Hong Kong U. I have caused action uh, to learn more about uh, what is happening, and I have tasked Education Bureau to learn more about uh, what is happening. They will report to me, and then I shall discuss with them uh, about the way forward. Oh, next reporter. Next reporter. Uh, Second row, this reporter in white on the right-hand side. I'm from Dot Dot News. Good morning, Chief Executive. The que first question about um, online taxi hailing app developed by the mainland entering the Hong Kong market. Will there be a relax a relaxation of um, the restriction for private cars to take calls? And according to media reports, many private, some private cars have illegally been providing cross-boundary transport services, and that instead of charging fees through the platform, a third party would be engaged to accept the fees. Now, will the um, Hong Kong government take the same enforcement action against these? Um, vehicles offering cross-boundary passenger services. As I said, the government are considering different proposals on this matter. We also assess local demand for point-to-point -point personalized transport service, as well as regulation on online car hailing services. And we're close to completing our work in this regard, including examination of overseas practices. We're going to report uh, our observations in the middle of July to Legislative Council. We'll also hear from members um, on this matter. We understand that there are major concerns from the community. In fact, I've also asked the relevant bureaus and departments to thoroughly examine how we should drop our proposal. So in the middle of July, we're going to present our analysis and findings to LegCo, and then we'll also collect views before mapping our way forward. All vehicles, all kinds of transport should comply with the laws, as I said. Any activities, including operations of the transport sector, should be done in accordance with the law. The law enforcement agencies will also take enforcement action according to the information received. That's the end of the briefing. Thank you.